uh, late at night, and my, uh, my email goes off, and my chief of staff says, you, you won't believe this. Uh, we're just getting word that it's 58,000 gallons, and, uh, and then he threw in some expletives. Um, uh, I won't repeat. And, uh, and then we knew that we had to wake up early in the morning and uh, establish a new framework. Once the oil enters the water, you've lost the battle. And certainly in terms of environmental damage, you've lost the battle. That's, it's just that simple. I mean, you can go all over the world. And when, once the oil's in the water, you lost. <laughs> 140 gallons. Uh, we literally, within the office, said, "Well, it's the size of some large RV that fell into the bay." Uh, you know, you don't stop the presses there and, and the rest of your day uh, on something like that. You make sure people are doing their job and move on. That's exactly what happened. Uh, we all moved on. Uh, had we known it was 58,000 gallons, uh, we would have stopped the presses. I believe the emphasis has to be put on decisions we made about prevention. Some of those were based upon again the idea that you could clean it up rather rapidly. Very difficult to do in this bay. It's not impossible. Again, I don't have any excuse for that. I, I think I said that on day two of this incident, and we will make corrective actions in order for that to not occur. We have a long standing issue out here with the submerged rocks. And again, we did a long study, and the conclusion was that nobody would run into them. Well, the conclusion has been for 50 years that nobody's going to run into the Bay Bridge. The city was left there waiting not do anything until late that evening. And by that time, a lot of folks uh, weren't necessarily at work. They weren't necessarily geared up uh, to be moving forward. And so we had to wait till the next morning. And now you've talked about 24-hour period with oil. Uh, it's, it's not static. It's dynamic. It's moving around the bay.